Hey, welcome back to Clever Cat Class. Are you ready to learn something all new and be a very clever cat? Today, I decided we should learn all about a mixed up mishmash creature, the aardvark. When I say mixed up, I'm talking about the aardvark's appearance because it certainly knows its way around its food and territory, the sub-Saharan Africa. See, the aardvark looks kind of like a mixed up blend of animals with ears like a rabbit, a tongue like an anteater, a tail like a kangaroo, web feet like a duck, and even a snout like a pig. Don't be fooled by all those comparisons, though. An aardvark isn't related to any of the animals it resembles. The aardvark, whose name literally means earth pig, is more closely related to the elephant, manatees, or even golden moles. Talk about opposite ends of the spectrum, huh? The aardvark's weird appearance isn't the end of the curious things about this wonderful beast, though. Each one of its special features gives it a huge advantage. For instance, its web feet give it the reputation as an excellent swimmer, that also served the aardvark well when it digs its shallow underground burrows that can be as long as 10 feet. Strangely, given their relatively huge size, these burrows are actually temporary places where aardvarks curl up in a ball and rest during the day. Though they also serve as great hiding places should a predator happen by during the night when the aardvark's busy searching for food. Aardvarks don't count completely on one of these pre-dug burrows being available when it needs protection, though. If it senses a predator like a cheetah, wild dog, python, hyena, or even a lion coming, the aardvark is most likely going to dig a brand new hole. Aardvarks can actually cover themselves completely, sealing the newly dug tunnel behind them in under 10 minutes. Because in addition to the webbing, aardvarks have four toes on their front feet and five on their back that are especially useful for digging. Now, if digging isn't an option and no temporary hiding spot is handy, the aardvark will fight. Those same strong feet and claws that are so useful for digging can be put to use for defense if necessary. Some people have actually compared the aardvark's claws to a pickaxe, though how they know since aardvarks generally avoid hard-to-dig rocky areas, I have no idea. Now, back to the burrow. When an aardvark feels it's caught enough food in an area around a particular burrow, it'll abandon it and move on to another location. Though they typically pick areas like grasslands, savannas, rainforests, woodlands. A curious fact, aardvarks are actually known to travel as much as 10 or 18 miles in a single night in search of the perfect food. Those abandoned burrows don't stay empty for long, though. Other creatures like pythons, porcupines, and even birds take advantage of all the aardvark's hard work, turning these abandoned burrows into long-term new housing. Now, it's important to point out, Female aardvarks do build more permanent residences when they take a spouse or have babies. These long-term burrows can be as long as 40 feet and have several entrances, and they'll last as long as the one baby aardvark, called a calf or cub, lives with its mama. Baby aardvarks are typically born in the fall between October and November, and they only weigh about four and a half pounds when they're born. They do grow quickly, though, and are ready to leave the burrow at about six months of age. At that point, the mother and baby aardvark will resume their solitary lifestyle and return to living in temporary housing. The biggest question I keep having about aardvarks is why they would work so hard building and rebuilding a home. And it turns out it's not all that hard for an aardvark because they can dig about two feet worth of holes in under 15 seconds. Now, I keep talking about how important food is to the aardvark, but I haven't mentioned what they eat. Aardvarks are omnivorous. Given its resemblance to an anteater, it's kind of no surprise that they really like ants and termites. In fact, they like them so much, it'll actually go out of its way to consume these tasty little bits. But it'll also eat things like wild melons and other insects with soft bodies if there are no handy ants or termites around. Aardvarks generally weigh between 110 and 180 pounds, and they're between 43 and 53 inches long, and that much aardvark needs a lot of aardvark fuel. Estimates are that an aardvark can eat actually 50,000 termites every single night. Given that amount of fuel, it's no surprise aardvarks have a couple of special features that sure come in handy when it eats. See, its tongue's a lot like an anteater's in that it's long, up to 12 inches, and sticky for grabbing up all those nasty little bugs. And when I say sticky, I mean it. The aardvark's salivary glands almost completely ring its neck to give the aardvark plenty of juice to keep that tongue super sticky at all times. The aardvark also has tough skin to protect it from getting bitten by angry ant or termite relatives as it snacks, and it can seal its nostrils shut to keep frightened insects from fleeing up its nose. Another curious thing is that aardvarks, sometimes called ant bears, swallow their food whole. Which leads us to another adaptation. The aardvark actually has a muscular area in its lower stomach that acts like a gizzard and grinds up the food once it's already inside. That sure saves time and lets the aardvark slurp up even more insects every single night. But don't think the aardvark is completely obsessed with food. 
Even while it's focused on cleaning out a termite mound, it rotates its ears constantly to listen for potential predators that might be sneaking up behind. See, its excellent hearing usually gives it plenty of warning, so it can slurp up those last few termites and then hide before a predator arrives. It also uses its sense of smell that's so helpful in finding food to sniff out predators on its nightly wandering. If you are lucky enough to find one, you might be able to sneak up on it because it has poor vision and color blindness, but I doubt so because its hearing is more than enough to compensate. If you do sneak up on one, though, it might squeal like a pig and hide, but it might also turn those amazing pickaxe claws on you. Given that, a way better option is... To find one in a zoo or preserve where you can see these amazing mixed up animals for yourself. They usually live about 23 years, so you're sure to find one. Thank you so much for learning with me today. We're really getting quite clever, aren't we? Now it's time for you to check your schedule and I will see you in your next class.